A random variable x follows a normal distribution with mean 20 and standard deviation of 5. Find the probability that x lies between 14 and 26. That's what this means. So, a random variable x follows a normal distribution with mean 20 and standard deviation of 5. So, a random variable x takes on values that can be anywhere along this line. Any, that's what's meant by random variable. It takes on values along this line here, and it takes on th those values with certain probabilities, or ranges of values with certain probabilities, and that probability distribution is given by this shape here. This is known as a normal distribution, this particular shape, this particular distribution. So this is not just any old symmetric distribution, actually. It has a particular mathematical form, which you don't have to know about. Um, it's often written like this, n for normal, and the first parameter is the mean of the distribution. The mean is, is this point here. It's actually the same as the median, because we're dealing with a symmetric distribution. So the mean would be the balance point of it, if we thought of this as a, as a weight. And it's also the point that cuts the area in half. So the area is 50% or 0.5. And now the total area underneath it is 1. The total area underneath any probability distribution is 1. The Greek letter mu is used to stand for the mean of a normal distribution. Well, the mean of any distribution, actually, especially if we're talking about a population. But anyway, and sigma is used for the standard the Greek letter sigma. It's actually a lowercase sigma, because uh, the uppercase sigma looks like this. That's used for denoting the sum of sum of a quantity. So mu is 20, sigma is equal to 5. Now, we're interested in the probability that x takes on values between 14 and 26. So 14 is to the left of 20, it's less than 20. 26 is over here. So the probability that x lies between 14 and 26, remember x is all along here, this is the horizontal line is, is all your x values. So the probability that x has a value between 14 and 26 is given by the area under the distribution. So to calculate that area, what we have to do is consider the standard normal distribution. Now the standard normal distribution, denoted n01, has a mean of mu, have, sorry, mean is equal to 0 and its standard deviation is 1. So it has exactly, well, similar shape, but um, it may be narrower. If the standard deviation is 1, it's going to be narrower than this one because this one has a standard deviation of 5. So the standard deviation is a measure of how spread out our distribution is. Um, its mean is 0. So what we want to do is transform this particular normal distribution into the standard distribution. We want to find the z value that corresponds to x equals 14 and the z value that corresponds to x equals 26. So the z value corresponding to x equals 14 will be somewhere here, less than 0, some negative value. And the z value corresponding to x equals 26 will be some value greater than 0, some positive value. So our x values are here and when we standardize this distribution we get what's called our z values. So for x equals 14, what's the corresponding z value? Well, what we do is we take our x value um, and we subtract the mean of our distribution, mu, and we divide by the standard deviation of sigma. So for a, a, distribu a, not a distribution with a standard deviation of 1, then z is just the number of standard deviations that our x value is away from the mean. So we have to calculate 14 minus 20. That gives us the distance of our x value to the mean. And when we divide by 
the standard deviation, which is 5, we get the number of standard deviations that our x value of 14 is from 20. And that'll be this value on our standard normal distribution. That's because the standard deviation of our standard normal distribution is 1. Anyway, um, I might explain a bit more about this in another video. So we're seeing how far our value of 4, how many standard deviations our value of 14 is from the mean. So we get that distance 14 minus 20 and we divide by the standard deviation of 5. That gives us the number of standard deviations that 14 is from 20. And that's minus 6 over 5, which is minus 1 point, minus uh, 1 and 1 fifth, which is minus 1.2. Now we do the same for x equals 26. This is our transformation. z equals x minus mu over sigma. So we have 26 minus 20. The distance is 6. And how many standard deviations is 26 from 20? Well, we divide by the standard deviation, which is 5. And we get 1.2 standard deviations. So this value is 1.2. So our original problem of getting this area here is now equivalent to getting the area between minus 1.2 and plus 1.2 on our standard normal distribution. So how do we get this area? Well, the standard norm, the, the shape of the normal distribution is a complicated mathematical function involving the number e actually, and we can't actually integrate this thing, you know, to get the area. So the values are actually worked out numerically, they're tabulated. So if we want to get the area between minus 1.2 and 1.2, what we'd first have to do is get the area from minus infinity up to 1.2. Get all this area here. Okay, so the values of z run from minus infinity up to plus infinity, where 0 is the mean. And you can see that it's this area that is tabulated, all the area um, below z. Okay, so we want all the area, all this area below 1.2. We have to do that first. And then, of course, we have to try and subtract out this tail because we don't want to. We want the area between um, minus 1.2 and plus 1.2. So, what we want here is the area from minus infinity up to 1.2. So what we do is, we see that for this particular table, and it's the case for many tables, this particular one gives us exactly what we need here. So the area from minus infinity to z, a z value of 1.2, so we just go down to 1.2, which is here, and we read under 0. Okay, these we've, we've got two decimal places in this table. So we have 1.20 is what we want. 1.20, we can just put in the 0. Like if we want a 1.21, we go to 1.2 and we read this value here, 0.8669. But this is what we want, 0.8849. Um, so if we have an area of 0.8849 to the left of 0.2, what's the area to the right of sorry, 1.2. What's the area to the right of 1.2? Well, the total area is 1, so it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.8849. So we have 1 minus 0.8849. So we get 0.1151. So what does that tell us? That tells us that this area here, and this, well, actually, both of these areas are the same by symmetry. So if this area is 0.1151, then this area here is 0.1151. Um, so what we need to do now is just take the 0.8849 and just chop off all of this area here, which is the same as this. So this area is 0.1151. So we need to take this away from 0.8849. And that'll give us the required area between minus 1.2 and plus 1.2. So um, we have 0 0.8849 minus 0 0.1151. So that's 0 0.7698.
Right, so this is the answer. So this is the probability that, well, we can write this in two ways. This is the probability that z lies between minus 1.2 and plus 1.2, which in turn is the same up here, is the same thing as the probability that x lies between 14 and 26. So that's the answer. Another way we could interpret probability is a proportion. We could say the proportion of x values that lies between 14 and 26 is 0.7689, or 76.98 percent, if you like, of all the values. Um, sorry, 76.98 percent of all the values of x lie between 14 and 26. We can think of it as a probability or as a proportion or fraction.